Welcome to Man Cave Media. Today we are checking out an external USB-C display. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a ton of these things everywhere. They are on Amazon, they are on AliExpress, etc, etc. This particular one came from Amazon. And of course, whenever I review something on Amazon, I do leave a affiliated link in the description. If you click on that to buy this product, you will be helping my channel. Uh, but without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get it out of the box and then I will get into the specs, shall we? So for this guy, I went with a 16 inch because my personal uh, MacBook Pro is a 16 inch. So I wanted something that matched the size because I'm just weird that way. I accidentally opened it upside down. Whoops. So we've got some paperwork here, user manual, several different languages. We have, what is this? This looks like a HDMI mini. Yep, this is an HDMI mini to full fat HDMI cable. We have, this looks like a USB-C cable. Yep, USB-C to C. I wonder if this is USB-A to C. Uh, no, it looks like USB-C to C. I think we get two USB-C to C cables. Yep. Pretty cool. And I'm guessing this is going to be the power brick. That is exactly what it is. This is your standard wall wart. I don't see any specifications on it anywhere at all. So um, I'll look at the product description here really quick and see if I can find out. Oh, duh, there it is. Uh, it's hard for me to read it. Hold on. 20 watts. So 20 watt uh, wall wart, it is USB-C, thankfully, <laughs> since that's all they gave us. Let me police the area here. All right, on to the star of the show. Oh man, it's pretty tightly wrapped into this plastic bag here. There we go. Straight away the cover kind of gives me a uh, iPad folio vibes. A nice looking cover and there is the display pretty nice matte display so on the sides hang on a second let me focus my camera so on the sides there you see two USB ports and the mini HDMI and then on the other side we have a power switch we have what looks like a volume rocker and the three and a half millimeter jack. Three and a half millimeter audio jack. All right, looks like it's got a little film screen protector over it here. Nice matte finish. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a fan of the matte finish. I don't like glossy finishes on my monitors, but. All right, let's go ahead and get it set up here and get this party started, shall we? Oh, the case does remove. 
So as I mentioned in the unboxing, it's got two full featured USB-C ports, one HDMI mini and one three and a half millimeter audio jack. And what's cool about this portable monitor is it is VESA mountable, VESA mountable, I don't know how, you, it's VESA mountable. It's got the mounting holes there. So this magnetic uh, cover just kind of pops off, very reminiscent to the uh, iPad cover. So the monitor is a 2K QHD, it's 2560 by 1600p, uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. As I mentioned already, it is VESA mountable. Uh, it includes a smart cover that has magnets. Uh, it is a matte finish. They also have a glossy finish available, but this one is a matte finish. Um, two full featured USB-C, one mini HDMI, and one three and a half millimeter audio jack and two built-in speakers, which we will be testing. So straight away, let's get this guy plugged into my Mac Pro, shall we? That's gonna be what it's mostly used for. All right, so right away when you plug it into the MacBook, it does power on immediately, and we get a no signal. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, there we go. Hey, there we go. All right, this is a very nice looking display. It is a little dim. So we're, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try plugging it in in a moment so we can see if it, it'll get brighter because uh, it does power on off the MacBook, no problem. But it is a little dim, so let's see. If I plug in the second USB-C to the wall wart, does it get brighter? So that's using the included, and it does. Ha! So if you use the included uh, USB-C uh, power brick with the second USB-C cable, it does get brighter. So I don't know if you'll need that. I'm gonna try it with the US, uh, I'm gonna try it with my Steam Deck and with my Switch. And uh, hopefully you don't need that second a uh, power source for the brightness with the switch and the steam deck because that would be unfortunate if you did but anyhow let's go ahead and check out how my macbook recognizes this thing so it is at its native uh 2560 by 1600 120 hertz refresh rates sorry it's going to be hard there we go so as i mentioned it is running at its native 2560 by 1600 120 hertz refresh, looks really nice connected to my MacBook, which is good because that's going to be its primary use. So let's try it really quick. I'm going to disconnect it from the power supply and let's try it with my Nintendo Switch because I'm curious what the brightness looks like without that secondary power supply. So let's kill it from there. Get my Nintendo Switch. It says it works natively without a dock, so let's see if that's true. It flickered. Oh, is it gonna come up? There it is, hey. All right, so I'm gonna disconnect it from its power supply really quick. Let's see if it gets a dimmer. My goodness. Oh, it turned off completely. So. That's unfortunate. It would appear the Nintendo Switch. Oh wait, no, it's still on. Is it gonna kick back in? No, I don't think so. So it would appear that the Nintendo Switch does not put out enough power to power the monitor. So that's unfortunate. You're gonna need the external power supply all the time. Uh, at least for the Nintendo Switch. The Steam Deck did uh, definitely have enough power. I'm sorry, not the Steam Deck. The MacBook did did have enough power, but the Nintendo Switch does not. So it looks really nice. Very nice, actually. Okay, sorry, we can't get into this too much because Nintendo will demonetize me. 
<laughs> but it does look really nice plugged into the Nintendo Switch. Let's play a little Elder Scrolls. Maybe I'm less likely to get demonetized by Nintendo if I'm not playing Zelda. Maybe. I don't know. So this is going to serve, like, the primary function I should say that this is going to serve is when I go on vacation and I want to uh, play on a larger screen, but I don't want to connect to the TV that's in the hotel room for whatever reason, you know, because my maybe my wife's watching TV or something or my kids are watching something, um, or like oftentimes I'm sharing the hotel room with other family, and I don't want to, you know, take over the uh, the TV that's in the room. And the other purpose this is going to serve is when I'm editing video on the go, and I'm not home to do so, it's nice to have that second screen. If you use uh, Adobe Premiere like I do, then you understand that it is nice to have that secondary screen. All right, so here's a little uh, Skyrim. Yes, I do have Lynx Champions tunic. That was one of the reasons why I bought Skyrim for the fourth time <laughs> when they announced it for the Nintendo Switch. I did, um, I did purchase it solely for the uh, Champions tunic, and you can also get the Master Sword in this version of Skyrim. But so it does look really good on the Switch. Uh, the speakers do sound pretty decent, at least on the Switch. Uh, let's go ahead and let's try uh, my Steam Deck and see how that goes, shall we? So technical difficulties, one second. Um, in classic fashion, my Steam Deck OLED is dead. I forgot to charge it this weekend, so I'm gonna go grab my old Steam Deck really quick. BRB AFK. All right, classic man cave media. So this is my standard. Oh, that looks terrible. This is my standard um, uh, Steam Deck. I plugged in my OLED right now so it will charge. Let me uh, restart my video here. Um, I wanted to try this out on my OLED Steam Deck. I'm gonna let it let it uh, charge up for a moment because um, I wanted to see if I could get that maximum refresh rate. This right now, this is plugged into my original Steam Deck, the 256 version. Oh no, down he goes. Bye, Sonic. <laughs> So this emulator, I'm sorry, this ROM that I have on the emulator isn't the best. So it does look a little blown out. Oh, I did it again. Uh, it looks a little blown out on this large screen. But I mean, it's not terrible. I think I'm at a boss level here. Yes, I am. Yeah, it's not terrible. But it does look a little bit like hella blown out. Ah, not paying attention. My goodness. All right. All right. While I'm giving my Steam Deck some time to charge up, let's go over pricing. I usually save this for the end of the video, but you know how it goes sometimes. Um, the one that I purchased here, the 16-inch uh, the 2K variant with the matte finish is currently $143 on Amazon. Uh, I noticed it on AliExpress for $135 but you do have to pay for shipping. Uh, so if you're not a Prime member, you might wanna explore uh, AliExpress or probably even Banggood. Um, I'm sure they have it there too and see if you can get it for a little bit cheaper. Uh, if you're not a Prime member, if you are a Prime member, then it's probably a wash because you get free shipping. They have a 4K version that is $295. So the 4K version is only 15 inches and it is only 60 hertz uh, refresh and it's $295, which I mean, that's not that bad for a 4K monitor, but 15 inch, ugh, that's, yeah, that's a little rough, a little rough. They have some package deals on here. 
Like you can buy two of the 2K version for 279. You can buy one that comes with a Visa mount that clamps to your table uh, for 219. That's pretty cool. And they also make a or they sell it with a magnetic stand. Uh, it's kind of like an iPad stand, and it uh, sits on there with a magnet. Uh, that's 215. That's pretty cool. So they do have some different package deals. Again, I'll put a link for this one in the description of the video, and it will be an Amazon associate link. So if you click on that link to purchase this product, you will be helping my channel. And I do appreciate that. Uh, since I bought mine on Amazon, uh, shipping time was pretty typical. I got it in a couple days. Uh, if you buy one off of AliExpress or Banggood, you know, your experience may vary. <laughs> your mileage may vary, I should say. Uh, sometimes for certain products, AliExpress is just as fast as Amazon or pretty close to it because they do warehouse a lot of their stuff here uh, stateside. Uh, so sometimes it can be comparable to Amazon. So, But if you're a Prime member, though, I do probably suggest going through Amazon uh, because you'll get that free shipping and the price difference on AliExpress will most likely be a wash. But do your research first. Amazon's not always the cheapest. Okay, hopefully we got enough charge now. Let's try running the benchmark again. Hopefully we good. Find out in a minute. it is running the benchmark but it looks like it is stuck at 30 frames per second which is not what I was hoping for Yeah, it's locked out at 30 frames per second. I don't like that. Let's uh, let's see if I can go back into settings here and see why that is. Oh, there. Jesus. All right, let's see. So let's do 120. Let's run that benchmark again. My fault. Hopefully the battery doesn't die. <laughs> oh, come on. Okay, woo. Got a little worried there. All right, we are uh, 39 frames per second, 38. <laughs> Still, the Steam Deck can't handle it, man. The Steam Deck can't handle it. Oh, up to 40. It hit 40 there for a moment. So it looks like the max uh, that we hit was 50. Uh, unfortunately, the Steam Deck 
hardware just um yeah it can't do it man but uh uh, the screen itself looks great. If you're looking for an external monitor to play on your Steam Deck or your Switch, uh, I highly recommend this. All right, so we saw on the MacBook that it can achieve 120 FPS. Uh, unfortunately, on the Steam Deck, uh, I I'm really curious to see what it would have done with Hogwarts, but apparently Hogwarts has a big update that I need to apply. But uh, on Cyberpunk, I was able to get up to 50 FPS, uh, which is not bad. Uh, the OLED Steam Deck is capable of 90, but... I think Cyberpunk is just a little too much for it to handle, <laughs> uh, especially running it on an external display. So um, I, I would be happy with 50 with Cyberpunk playing on this display. It looked really nice. Um, of course, running the Switch on this display, it looked beautiful. The speakers are okay. Like they're, they don't they don't blow you away or anything. But for a device this thin, um, I think they're actually you know pretty decent for what they are. Uh, you do have a headphone jack, so if you wanted to listen to, or sorry, not listen to, but if you wanted to play your games with headphones on for uh, for better audio, you have that option. Uh, but it is nice to have the built-in speakers just in case you want them. Um, the, the cover that's included is pretty nice quality. It's pretty thick. And I love that it's magnetic. So if I ever want to pop it off, you know, it's just like the uh, the iPad folio case. You just pull it off. It's held on with magnets. And I also really like that it's got the option for a Visa mount. If you wanted to use this as a as a third display, and you know you're trying to save a little bit of money, it's not that much cheaper than an actual monitor. But let's say you wanted something that you wanted a third display at home, but you also wanted something that could be more portable when you want to travel. This would be an excellent option, and it's mountable. And you could even get a magnetic mount and not even use the Visa mount, but uh, let's say you had an extra stand or something laying around, you could mount this to it and use it as a third monitor at home. And when you travel, just pop it off and take it with you uh, with the magnetic case. So very versatile monitor. I'm um, very happy with my purchase and I highly recommend it. All right, that's all I have for this one. Thank you again for stopping by. Please smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and help feed that algorithm. I hope you have a great afternoon. And like always, thank you for watching.